If you've ever wondered how the amount and age of dunder impacts the flavor profile of a rum made using dunder, then this video is for you because I did those experiments. <laughs> Welcome back everyone, I'm Robin from This Blog's Meat and I made four different rums using different amounts of dunder and using both young, we'll call it, and aged dunder. In case you've missed it, I've posted a number of videos where I talk about what dunder is, how I'm using it in my fermentations, and looking at it under the microscope, which I think is the coolest part. But previously, I made two different batches of rums using 20 and 40% dunder. This is what I'm calling my young dunder. I then tasted those side by side and even had two impartial judges blind taste them side by side to see the flavor profile differences. And bumping the amount of dunder that you're using from 20 to 40% definitely results in some significant flavor profile changes in rums. But I was also curious about how age impacted the rums. Now I'm not talking like age of the rums, I'm talking age of the dunder. So I let my dunder bucket sit for about six months and then started two new fermentations, again using 20 and 40% aged dunder in the fermentation. In the last video I posted about this, I talked about how this actually impacted the fermentations. And there was definitely an impact in fermentation. But to quickly summarize the fermentation behaviors, both 20% dunder fermentations, whether it was using the young dunder or the aged dunder, fermented pretty seamlessly. However, the 40% young dunder fermentation took a little bit longer to get started. And also it didn't ferment down to as low of a specific gravity. It only got down to 1.027. And for reference, the 20% dunder fermentations got down to 1.015 and 1.011 with the young and aged dunder fermentations respectively. The 40% aged dunder fermentation, on the other hand, yeah, this one was quite challenging to get started and I had to intervene with some sterilization and some nutrients and eventually it got rolling. However, that one fermented down lower than the 40% young dunder fermentation it got down to a specific gravity of 1.017. And I thought that was interesting. With all four of these, I took the exact same distillation cuts for both the low wines and the spirit run. And now I have four white rums that are sitting at 70% ABV. And it is time to taste them. But before I taste these four rums, I do want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel and for being a part of our neat community over on Patreon. You got to see a few weeks ago when I was actually tasting these for the first time straight off the still. Now, if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel and join our neat community, I've got a link in the description below. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's start with the 20% Dunder Rums. I have the Young Dunder Experiment here and the Aged Dunder Experiment here. I'm getting some really nice citrusy, like orange oil notes right off the bat. But there's a lot more sweetness present with the aged Dunder rum. Wow. Okay, so I remember that Jerry and Zachos, when they tasted the 20% Dunder rum, young Dunder rum, straight off the still, they got a bunch of Werther's original notes on the nose but I'm getting that so much more in the aged Dunder rum. There's also raisins, some vanilla ice cream. Now when I go back to the 20% young Dunder rum, I'm getting a lot more grassiness and more like green plantain peels, but there's still some sweetness. Maybe a little key lime peel too and back to the 20% aged Dunder rum. I get just butterscotch. Maybe a little like caramelized bananas. Wow, that's so fun. Okay, so there's definitely a significant difference in the nose between the 20% young and aged Dunder rums. So let's move on to the 40% Dunder rums. I have the young, and the aged. The 40% Young Dunder Rum has like some mulchy cranberry notes. And there's definitely sweeter notes again when I move to the 40% Aged Dunder Rum. I'm getting more like prunes. Also a little bit of that Werther's Original. And if I go back to the 40% Young Dunder Rum, I get more like green apple notes. That's so interesting. There's also that like vanilla bean ice cream thing on the 40% aged Dunder rum. Maybe a little coconut too. I think I wanna compare both aged Dunder rums side by side now. So I've got the 20% aged Dunder rum and the 40% aged Dunder rum. Okay, so I'm getting those similar notes of like lots of vanilla bean, some caramel candies, some banana, but very much like a caramelized banana. I'm getting a lot more raisins on the nose for the 40% aged Dunder rum. A little bit of like a sweet gluey thing and some like cocoa butter. I think I'm getting more fresh fruits on the 20% aged Dunder rum and more dried fruits on the 40% aged Dunder rum but they are both really sweet. Wow, that's so nice. Okay, so I'm gonna start with tasting the 20% Young Dunder rum. This is nice. Okay, so right away I get figs and grape jelly. Then it starts to get a bit astringent, um, almost like a chemically taste, almost like a bug spray taste. But then that transforms into some cinnamon sticks. And this has a lovely mouthfeel. The finish is almost like a bitter grapefruit skin or like if you eat the pith of a bitter grapefruit. Let's move on to the 20% aged Dunder rum. This has a lot darker fruits right off the bat. It's more like prunes rather than figs. It also has a creamy mouthfeel and also does that bitter thing. It's a little bit like bug spray and then becomes more of like a cacao nib. That kind of turns into more of like a clove and an allspice and there might be just a hint of tamarind paste in there. I don't know which I prefer. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to the 40% Young Dunder rum. So this one seems to have a little bit more heat on the palate. I'm getting a little bit more prickliness. It also has a nice mouthfeel though. 
and I'm getting more so like sharp fruits. Um, more of like a kiwi, and then it does the bug spray thing, which is interesting that I'm picking that up in all of these so far. And then it comes back in with some fruitiness, and that is more like apricot -y, almost underripe pineapple, like maybe like the pineapple core. And the finish is more of like a golden raisin. Last but not least, we have the 40% aged dunder rum. Aged dunder. This one has a nice viscous mouthfeel, but it did out of the four seem to have the most heat. I got the tingliness that just kind of lingered. And there was some fruitiness on the palette. I was getting some figs as well as some prunes. But out of the four, this definitely presents more as bug spray. I wonder what that bug spray note is. Okay, so they are all significantly different from one another. I'm not sure which I prefer. On the palette, I think I preferred the 20% aged Dunder Rum the best, and the 40% aged Dunder Rum would have been my least favorite on the palette. On the nose though, all of these had different qualities that I really, really enjoyed. I have a feeling that all of these will taste really, really great with a little bit of oak influence. Smell these four. Fruity, citrusy in the first one. A little bit of the same, but more where there's in the second one. This one's very light. I'm not getting much from anything. This one, more like the first one. More like the first one? Yeah. Wait, do you have one that you would say like, ooh, I really want to try that. That smells really good. The second one. Second one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jerry has now confirmed that the one that I enjoyed the most on the palette is the one that he enjoyed the most on the nose. Look at that. So, all right, so I've added a little bit of water to each of these and that brings them down to between 52 to 56% ABV. So significantly lower than 70%. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the 20% Young Dunder Rum felt hotter and had more of that bug spray note come forward with the addition of water. But there was also some nice fruitiness, a little less like dried figs and a little more like fresh figs. The 20% Aged Dunder Rum has still a lot of that where there's original and vanilla ice cream on the nose. And then there's some like figs mixed in prune juice on the palate. And a lot more of that bitter grapefruit pith comes forward with the addition of water. Mm. The 40% Young Dunder Rum still has some of that heat. <laughs> There was an interesting like banana pepper and salt and vinegar chip note on the nose that I was getting. There was still a significant amount of heat on the palate and more of that bug spray came forward with the addition of water, but I was also getting a lot more like sour Granny Smith apple too. 
The 40% aged Dunder Rum has picked up more of like a creme brulee nose with the addition of water. And it has lost a little bit of the bug spray e thing. I'm getting some more fruits coming forward. They're a little bit bitter, similar to the grapefruit pith that I'm getting, but maybe it's more of like an orange pith now. Oh, oh, it just got red hots on the nose. Wow, really interesting. Okay, so in conclusion, both amount of dunder and age of the dunder have a significant impact in the final flavor profile of rums. I feel like based on my results, I should be able to give some suggestions. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try. However, this was just four experiments and I feel with Dunder and using Dunder to make rum, there is thousands of different experiments that I could run. For example, a lot of people, when they use their Dunder, they actually just add it back into the still with a regular molasses, water, and yeast fermentation or whatever they're choosing to ferment. So they don't actually incorporate the Dunder into the fermentation itself. They use it as a form of flavor. Also, the things that I do to the Dunder as it's sitting there aging, could impact the carboxylic acids that are present, etc. And that again will impact the flavors that you get. I would say that if you're going to use the Dunder in the fermentation, I would try to stay under 40% Dunder just because of how challenging it has been to get that to actually ferment. 20% was easy. So I wonder where the threshold is between the 20 and 40% dunder in the fermentation. I wonder where it starts to really impact the actual fermentation itself. If you have made any rums using dunder, let me know your method down below. I'd be really interested to hear what your results were. I will say that the distillation cuts that I took, being that I took the spirit cut at 70% ABV, is still a pretty rough cut, right? I'm allowing a lot more flavors to come through. And I think that all four of these, as I said before, are going to age really nicely. So I think that bug spray note that I'm getting will transform and will go away ultimately with the addition of oak. So now it's time to age all four of these. And I have a lot of rum to play around with. So please let me know in the comments below how you think I should age this. What type of oak? How should I treat the oak? Should it be used oak? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe.